Hello there. I'm going to read out some quite difficult material and really try to understand what it means. It concerns the ideas of good and evil and how they have disrupted the intelligence of people. Um, I will take several sections of material, some are easier, some are more difficult. And um, I hope you realise that um, it's a, quite a struggle for me to try and elucidate this material, it's not for free. Um, the first material I stumbled upon was in a book by René Guénon, a French philosopher. And he tries to describe the modern spirituality of the modern world and how it is not what it claims to be. I will read. From everything that has been said so far, it is easy to deduce that the setting up of the counter-tradition and its apparent momentary triumph. Now he's talking about the modern world and all the things that are in it, as opposed to a traditional society that had integrity. Will in effect be the reign of what has been called inverted spirituality. This last is of course only a parody of spirituality, imitating it, so to speak, in an inverse sense, so as to appear to be its very opposite. It appears to be its opposite, but it is not really so. For whatever may be the pretensions, no symmetry or equivalence between the one and the other is possible. This point must be ins insisted on, for many people allow themselves to be deceived by appearances and imagine that there exist in the world two contrary principles, contesting against one another for supremacy. This is an erroneous conception identical to that commonly attributed to the Manichians and consisting to use theological language in putting Satan on the same level as God. Now, I read this and it reminded me that Ospensky said that there was no negative emotion. There was no part in the emotional center for negative emotions, that they didn't exist. And I thought it was very interesting to see the correspondence here. There is this sense that people talk of good and bad as being the right hand and left hand. And somehow they kind of balance each other out. And on the basis of these kinds of ideas, society is looking for the equality of men and women. But of course, this is all completely wrong. It is only when you put men and women together and there is a transmission across that something is created and only creation can stand in the way of destruction. And so when people talk about good and bad, they don't see, they don't see the, the struggle between them, the transmission between them. They don't understand that creation comes from the meeting of good and bad, the struggle. That's why Gurdjieff talks about the need for struggle. Struggle creates individuality. The law of three is a struggle, always and everywhere, at every scale, and we must struggle. Struggle, transmit, bridge, communicate. However you would talk about it, the lightning between heaven and earth, it's all the same. The idea that there is equality is an idea that comes from dying people. There is no equality. Equality is death. Equality is when there is no more bridging. When you hear politicians or society talking about equality, what they mean is there is no more bridge between one side or the other and therefore society is decaying, it is dying. Equality means dying. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? And of course, from another point of view, equality is just boring because there's nothing to do. You're too afraid to actually use what you've got, whether it's tits, ass, or your cock. How boring is that? 
I saw a film actually um, from the 70s. It was called The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie. It's an interesting old film from the 70s and it concerned three couples who lived in France and they had a kind of caper, a comedy of errors if you like. Um, but in one of the moments there was a dinner party scheduled for the evening and friends were coming over for dinner. But the couple were busy. They, they were in the mood and they climbed out of the window as the guests were arriving, descended the trellis into the garden and screwed behind the bushes because they couldn't keep their hands off each other. The call of the law of three was so strong that this young French couple abandoned their dinner party and abandoned their guests because they were too busy. They were too busy singing the song of God. It was good to see. People used to be like that when I was young. Where are they now? The next section is from Fritz Peters. One of the unforgettable things he had said, and he had repeated it many times, was that what he called good and evil in man grew together equally, that man's potentiality to become either an angel or a devil was always equal. While he had spoken frequently of the necessity to create or acquire a reconciling force within oneself in order to deal with the positive and negative or good and evil sides of one's nature, he had also stated that the struggle or war was never ending, that the more one learned, the more difficult life inevitably would become. So in this way, Gurdjieff is saying, inside you there is good and bad, and they must bridge and communicate and create something new. Although I would say that if you are able to initiate your conscious and real identity, it is of a higher order and it is more stable and it does bring peace, it does bring heaven. And yet the journey doesn't stop, but the nightmare is over. The nightmare that we exist in is not shared by the other creatures on this planet because they are stable. We are unstable and therefore we have one hell of a struggle. The first part is to exit from the human world, to separate I from it, to actually try to separate the real identity from the false. That is the first step. Oh, you, before that, of course, you need to observe yourself and be attracted to even notice that there may be something to do. But after you separate I from it, then you need to solidify I. And Gurdjieff had certain exercises for self-recognition, the embodiment of the real self. That's the second step. And most people still struggle with that until the end of their life. But there is a third step, which means that after you have become self-realized and the inside is stable, the third step is to then, on the basis of that inner stability, of the basis of being I am, of living in I am, without effort, for it to become truly stable, then you can pull in all the mess, all the debris of the past, all the unconscious nightmare that you grew up in. The lotus starts to integrate the mud into it until there is nothing left. The Gurdjieff also said that the lesser liberation is the freedom from internal influences and the greater liberation is the freedom from external influences. Again, a very prescient and rare description of the spiritual path by Gurdjieff. The first part is the separation of I from it and the embodiment of the real self. But to be free of the external means to integrate within your light all the bridges into the outside world, which basically means all the debris, all the subconscious debris inside of you 
has to be integrated piece by piece into your light until all the bridges to the outside world are, are also light. It is only then that you will not feel the kind of pain that people in this world feel. If a man and woman create something new, it's like the force of life gets bigger in a vertical way, but their bridging is horizontal. The horizontal bridging of man and woman in a traditional marriage creates a vertical rising of society. That is one description of the interaction of different levels. And now I will read from Uspensky. This is uh, from a Q&A session with Uspensky. Student asks, by direction you mean aim? Ospensky says, yes, aim means direction, a certain line. If my aim is to go home from here, it will be right for me to turn to the right and, and wrong to turn to the left. This is how the principle of good and evil can be established. There can be no definition of good and evil or right and wrong without first establishing an aim or direction. When you have an aim, then what is opposed to your aim or take, takes you away from it is wrong and what helps you is right. It must be your personal aim. If it corresponds to the possibilities of development, then the system explains these possibilities. And if you understand that what keeps us from reaching our aim is mechanicalness, and what helps us is consciousness, it will follow that consciousness represents good and mechanicalness evil. So instead of good and evil, the system uses the words conscious and mechanical. This is quite sufficient for all practical purposes. Here Ospensky talks about the bad being mechanical. One could also say it is unloving or it is a world without juiciness, a world without sex, meaning the interaction of the active and passive. I, I was watching um, some people in Shanghai at night in these tall high rises and in Shanghai right now uh, it's April 2022, um, they've all been locked down for some other COVID mandate and people have taken to opening their windows, their balcony windows and screaming at the top of their lungs across the city and Shanghai now in the evening has people screaming one to the other and this kind of um, Chinese society I think is looks like it's coming over to the west where everybody's put in a box but one thing I, I wanted to say is that the law of three can work in quite subtle ways. For instance, um, if you sit quietly in a formal sitting meditation, it looks like you're passive, but this is incorrect. There's a deep kind of intelligence that is working and it is creating a connection and that it's trying to bridge something new. It's trying to open up a new form of deep intelligence that can sense um, the deep states of reality and there is a relationship between you and that deep state and a kind of bridging. In that way the law of the creed is still functioning. It's, it's not